Uh, in Newtonian physics, everything is measurable. It's measurable in height, width, time, volume. There's some sort of a, of a physical measurement we can do to that. Quantum physics is creation. It is energies coming together in a certain form. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for being here. If what you hear brings you value, please like, comment, and subscribe. We hope you enjoy this podcast. Thanks for being here again, Cliff. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Glad we could do this. What I wanted to discuss today that's been on my mind a lot is when manifesting works and when it doesn't. And I'll be speaking mostly from my own experience. Also with uh, what's made me think about this has been uh, listening to and reading Neville Goddard <clears throat> and going to the Joe Dispenza retreat in Cancun uh, at the end of next month. And what I've realized is that when it's worked for me as when it's not is when I'm able to get emotion emotionally invested then and there who what when and where in that time frame because I remember the first big time that manifesting for me that for me was a big deal that I did it um consciously was when I got my first motorcycle and at the time at the age I was and everything else uh, I if I had 50 bucks left at the end of the month I thought I was in tall cotton and within three months I had the $2,500 to pay for the motorcycle and the gear and the registration and all that stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it was an older used bike, but had been well cared for. And I've recognized this last fall that I would feel guilt or shame or uh, self-castigation because I wasn't doing what I needed to do of what, you know, of visualizing and putting myself in the moment, in the time, in the place. And I've recognized that if I'm not doing that, it, it may be because I'm not that interested in it. I've also recognized, though, that another reason I may not be doing that is because I don't feel worthy and deserving. When I go back to when I did actually get my motorcycle, it the way that all happened, and it may sound like a small thing, but for me it was huge. The way it all happened was I would be driving along and I would see a whole group of, bi of bikers go by and I would physically bounce in my seat. And I would jerk the steering wheel of it, just go, oh, you lucky bastards. Good on you. Gosh, you know, that's, that's so cool. And I could, I didn't have to try. I just was instantly transported to being there in that caravan. And I could, I, I'd been on bikes when I was a little kid and I could smell the exhaust. I could smell the hot oil off of the headers and the cams and... It would it it was it was an odd a choice if I thought about it or not. I I would have dreams about it. I would fall asleep thinking about it and daydream about it before falling asleep and after waking up. It was it was just that. And I woke up one weekend and my friends and roommates were going to go down to our hometown and ride horses. And I arrayed. I didn't really want to. Uh, they were kind of different, but I thought, you know, I have no, nothing else planned this weekend and I love and miss <laughs> riding horses and okay, I'll go. And 
even on that drive down on the high highway, I saw a ton of bikes, and I was talking to my friends about it, and my childhood best friend was there too, and it was just, oh man, a bike, and he's like, yeah, that would be cool, blah, 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 and I would physically feel my state change when I would see a bike go by, and we got to where we were going to ride horses, but one horse was lame, one had just foaled we couldn't ride horses and but at the property 150 yards away way back in a dusty tractor carport i saw a bike and i went "Ooh, what's that and the gal there who lived there said oh that's my brother's old bike and i knew nothing about bikes at the time all i knew is that i did want to touch a honda I thought it was a Chinese bike. <laughs> and I went up to it and I walked around it and she said, oh yeah, you know, I, I think he wants to sell it. I said, oh really, do you think it'd be okay if I sat on it? And she said, sure. And I sat on it and it felt like I sat into it and it was just fit me perfectly. Just everything about it just tickled my goose and... Uh, she gave me his, I give her my information. He had gone out with my best friend's sister years before that, so I'd run across him once or twice before, knew about him, did, didn't know him. And he gives me a call that night when I get home, and we talked about it, and he said, well, you know, I really don't want to sell the bike. It was my first bike. I love the bike. It's a great bike, all this stuff. Uh, but my sister told me how you reacted to it. It's like, so I really, really should sell it because I have a bike that fits me better and it's more bright. So, but if you're serious, I'll sell it to you. And uh, it was a Honda and great bike. I've put on over 50,000 miles on it. And like I said, within three months of seeing it, I had the ability to buy it. I still have no idea how. And that's one of the things with a goal I have for the end of April. It's a very definite, measurable, in-time goal that I have no way of imagining how it can come together. But it's the goal I have. And things have come together where I'm more... Uh, it's more of a factual belief than faith-based belief that this will occur. And I just reminded myself yesterday because I realized I was getting kind of stressed and unsure and uncertain about it all and how, how to do it. And then I had to remind myself, it's not my job to figure out how to do it. Mm-hmm. And the whole idea of let go, let God, doing it in faith. And and that is actually what I then had to do. And it relieved a lot of the pressure. And I know from experience the fact that I did let that go and stopped worrying about the how. If I if I if if I do if if I'm more concerned about my input than what the output, the outcome will be. That's where the magic happens, where I'm doing the things, I'm being consistent, I'm staying healthy, I'm keeping to a schedule, I'm doing all of these things that are good inputs. I know that what I put in, I will get back. I will reap what I will sow. And recognizing I'm not trying to figure out how to do it. It's my job just to focus on it. And that goal has been something I can't help but think about multiple times during the day. And it's one of those things that excites me and supports my belief, my faith, is that I I know the state I'm in is at least very close to the state of excitement and frame of mind that I've been in when I've been successful before, just like, being able to take off for Europe for three months each year during the off season and being the first two times I managed to do that, uh, 
I had no idea how I could. It was just I was absolutely dedicated to that notion and I was able to do it. So I'm very excited about uh, my current big objective where I'm, I consciously chose a goal and it's kind of the first time where the processes I'm being a little bit more systematic about it of where it's like oh I'm doing this okay that means I'm on the right track I'm enthusiastic I'm purposeful I'm exci excited about it and when I visualize myself after the ac accomplishment I can emotionally be there I know where I am I see where I am I see what lights are on I know the time of day I know exactly what's going on and I can put myself there emotionally with grat which is the gratitude and enthusiasm and excitement and the fact that I don't have to have a note somewhere to remind me to do it or there are, there are there have been times where you've asked me uh, on different ideas I've expressed you know if I've been doing this or that and I said oh no I just forget you know, weeks will go by and I won't think about it. Well, with this thing, a few hours will go by where I don't think about mm -hmm. about it. And I'm really and I and I for me that's been where the magic has happened. Has been where I can actually emotionally invest myself into that time and place and I don't have to make myself do it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I have some thoughts on that. <clears throat> and I guess I need to start at the difference between Newtonian physics and quantum physics. Mm -hmm. uh, in Newtonian physics, everything is measurable. It, it's measurable in height, width, time, volume. There's some sort of a, of a physical measurement we can do to that. Quantum physics is creation. It is energies coming together in a certain form. So whenever we come up with an idea of, oh, I would like to experience this, we have to keep it into the quantum realm until we have a real strong direction of, of, of what we want. Uh, you know, uh, we'll take your bike for, for example. Who were living with me whenever whenever you got the bike <clears throat> and uh, you know you had a picture on the wall of a bike I, I don't know whether it was the same one I remember it was a black one but I think it was on my a laptop but yeah yeah okay yeah. so you you had a picture of the bike and and you looked at it you talked about it incessantly um, but in that time, you were creating opportunities for the quantum world, for the world of creation to take place. Mm -hmm. So I think board. one of the biggest mistakes that we make is the idea of putting a time limit to it. Uh, if you put a time limit to it, you've already moved into the, to the Newtonian world. True. You know, uh, and, and, it's a half-baked idea is, is, is what's really going on. If it's baked completely, <laughs> the loaf will come out of the oven. Right. You know, right. Um, if it's half-baked, it, it comes out not being what you wanted. And uh, I think that that's the most important thing to do is to work in your mind, to close your eyes and, and to visualize of having the object, whatever it is that you want, and the feeling that you get whenever you get what you want. And right. not having uh, an idea to, okay, these are the steps I'm going to take. That's into the quantum realm. And, and it will work somewhat, you know, uh, if, you, if you beat it and, and push it up long enough, um, it will work. But 
if you go into the quantum realm and you create it there, whenever it's finished its creation in the quantum realm, it will happen in the physical realm and you'll have no clue of how it is happening, what is causing it to happen. Events will happen quickly. I mean, right. uh, and, and I've, I've experienced both of those things um, numerous times. Um, and, and the only problem with dealing with it in the quantum realm, or, or not in the quantum realm, but in the Newtonian realm, is that there's pieces to the puzzle and if you're missing a piece, the puzzle doesn't work. Right. Where if you're in the quantum realm, you go in there and you're focusing, creating this image in your mind. And once you get the image correct, where it's, you know, complete, where you think it's, that's what I want. And then imagine yourself as already having it in a relatively short order, and a, a relatively short order might be moments, it might be hours, it might be days, weeks, months, even years, um, to do that. But I, I think the reason that it goes on beyond years is because we, we tried to do something to force it into place. You know, we, we tried yeah. to take action. We tried to get smarter. We tried to, you know, educate ourselves and all that kind of stuff. Right. There is also... in Along those lines, there's also that, you know, you, you can't pour into a full cup. And... Sometimes the, th the way we are, the way we think, what's in our life does not allow space for the next thing. And the reason I have a time-based goal is I, for one, when I came up with it, it was... Uh, uh, five months out mm -hmm. and in my experience three months 90 days seems to be kind of the sweet spot mm -hmm. and most of it happens in the last three to four weeks mm -hmm. uh, and and that's one of the things with the bike was I had thought about that for almost a year before right but it was then uh, about two or three months before I saw the bike for the first time that I became definite in my desire mm -hmm. of I want to have a bike and I want to be able to travel the country. Right. And then I saw the bike and I went, oh, that's the bike. That's it. That mm -hmm. is it. That fits every vague notion I've ever conceptualized because I didn't know enough about bikes to know what I want or wanted. But when I saw it, it fit that vague notion. Right. And then within three months, it was my bike. Right. So w with that time, there's, it's kind of that balance that is talked about of being in the flow state and I've experienced it so many times photographing and while on my motorcycle or giving speeches is where it's it's kind of like riding an elephant or a horse is where you don't have to make it do what it's going to do but you have to be present and aware mm -hmm. of what it's doing. Right. And you can force a bike around and you can force a horse around, but only so much for only so long mm -hmm. before you just come up against laws of nature that you just can't force around. Right. Right. It's one of the distinctions between power and force. Precise, precisely. And being in that flow state of using the power and knowing when I'm wrestling 
or when I am in harmony. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I ride a bike and I've been in that flow state, it does feel like I just allow things to happen. Right. But it is all very grounded in space and time, what I'm doing, when and where. Right. And when it comes to this goal of mine for to achieve by the end of April, it's one of those things where, for me personally, instead of it just being some vague notion of when and where, it's I have a clear goal in mind. I have a clear destination and I know what it'll look and feel like when I'm there. But how I get there is not important. Right. It's who <coughs> I'm, it, it's, it's, it, it's not, and just like Jim Rohn had said, it's not about what you're doing. It's about who you're being while you do it. Right. And that's one of those things is where it, it, it's, it's that reminder for me of realigning myself with that goal. Mm -hmm. of where it is based in time. I'm still not trying to force it. I'm not Mm -hmm. trying to make it. I'm not trying to get there in a specific way. You know, my will be done. Right. It's, it's, I, I have that clear goal and how I get there. I don't care. It's about who I'm being, which is why I picked up on it and changed my mindset yesterday when I realized I was stuck in, how, what, when, and where. Right. And it's like, no, no, that's that's not who you want to be while you're going towards this goal. Right. So do you think that's still productive or could I tweak that there? Because to me, that makes sense in my head. Well, I would suggest that you spend time, especially just before you go to sleep at night, uh, in imagining your final goal. And if you do that repeatedly, you will add details to the overall goal. It will, it will come down to, uh, you know, one of my goals right now uh, is to build a house that I've had in my mind for 30 years. And uh, I've, over the last three or four months, I have focused on it to the point where I can see the color of the paint on the walls. I can smell a roast in the oven. <laughs> There's all sorts of, of uh, details that I'm putting onto it. And it amazes me at how I'll be going through a day not, not doing anything in particular. And uh, I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and someone will say something in the video in such a way that it piques my interest and i say oh that's important that that right. thought that that's an important thought right. and that builds more support to what i'm thinking and i can see this whole thing taking place um First in the quantum realm, and then it it's coming into the physical realm whenever I hear somebody say it, and I've I've been amazed. I have this court case going on, and uh, you know I've I've done a lot of despicable things in my life, but I've never been a lawyer. Um, the uh, <laughs> <coughs> And 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 now what is happening is is I'll be I'll be listening to some podcast or something, and someone will say something, and it will be in a lawyerly like fashion, or it's a, you know they're using a lawyer's language or term, or they talk about uh, you know some act of Congress, and. Boy, that that hits me like, oh, pay attention to that. So I I write that down, and as soon as the show's over, I go and start doing my research as to what does that that particular thing mean. Um, And I'm waiting for a response. It'll it'll come here, you know, within the next week or so, I I think, uh, from the Department of Justice. And... uh, I, I have this feeling they're going to, you know, make another move for dismissal because 
I, I blew holes in their last one. And uh, this is the last shot that they have. Uh, and, and then I get a shot back and then it, it goes to the, the court. Um, and uh, just over the last couple of days, I've gotten, I think it's four different things that are apropos to my case. Nice. Yeah, it's it, it's fun, funny how that stuff comes along. And one of the things that I found is because I don't enjoy debates. I don't like listening to debates. I don't even really like listening to talk shows just because it's someone else's opinion about what someone else said. Right. It, and when someone disagrees with me, if we go back and forth once and twice, once or twice, I can tell relatively quickly, does this person want to learn or does this person want to be right? Yeah. And if it's just, if, if I say a thing and a person disagrees with me and goes, well, could you explain that? They're seeking to understand. Right. And one thing I've experienced in the last while since reading these books by Goddard is that when I get pushback on it, it's 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 been fun because it's been allowing me to establish more of what I believe and why I believe what I believe. And one thing I found is because some pushback I've I've received is, oh well, I'm not entirely sure if I can buy into this because you know what if I start to believe that I can just fly. You know, well, I can't do that, so, you know, it's all dumb. Right. That's not the point. And what 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 people miss is that the ego is preoccupied with maintaining the status quo. Right. And making sure that the chain changes are not too big. Self-preservation. Survival. And... It doesn't want to accept something that is such foundation is such a foundational shift from what their beliefs have been before. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that the missing piece in that, because I found myself thinking that too when I find myself in doubt, and I have in the past. And what I realized for me, what it was is the essence of think and grow rich which is if you can conceive it and visualize it and believe it you can achieve it Mm -hmm. so so that that's the magic there is where if you can believe in it because if you say well i don't believe in this thing that i could visualize therefore manifesting is all hocus pocus yeah then that's just your ego kicking in for self-preservation but if you can actually perceive it conceive it if you can conceive it perceive it and believe it then you can create it yeah neville goddard talks about the lady who who read the biblical uh, verse that says uh, if you say to this mountain be gone to the sea it will be gone so she goes to her window, she looks at a mountain, and she says, be gone to the sea. And she gets up the next morning and whips the window open, and the mountain's still there. She said, see, I knew it wouldn't work. <coughs> right, right. And, 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 that, and that, for me, needs to be a scripture as far as I am concerned. Christ needed to say that, like give that uh, little disclaimer there. It, if you have but the faith of a mustard seed... Right. And this does not mean doing that and waking up. It's like, I knew it would be there. Right. Well, then you had you didn't even have the faith right. of the mustard seed in the first right. place. Well, and, and you can't <laughs> believe it. I mean, that's, that's, that's a part of that process is you have, to, you have to be able to conceive it. You have to be able to see it in your mind. Right. And then you have to be able to believe that you're well, you're worthy of it and and you can attract it to you uh 
Um, and then what happens is, is I, like I say, I've, I've had experiences on both sides of the fence. Uh, sometimes where I, I, I tried to, you know, with this court case and that stuff, it's been going on for 30 years because I've been trying to learn, uh, legal language and, uh, and, and at the same time, now I recognize it wasn't in the language, it was in a misunderstanding of the basics. Mm. You know, and, and once I understood the basics, and it, oh, okay, this is what's going to happen, this, is, this has to happen, that has to happen. Right. Uh, well, and that's one of, one of the reasons why I gave myself the time constraint was it was uh, when I began going to the gym when I first like actually joined a gym I'd find myself go not going and I went once in like six weeks and I was so irked because I was paying for it and I grew up with a gym in the house so that annoyed me and I made the decision that okay I will go after work even if all I do is do some do a warm up on the rowing machine. At least I'll do something. It's a step in the right direction. And I told myself, if that's all I do, that's fine. I don't have to do more. But I know that once I'm there, most likely I will do more. Mm -hmm. And there was twice in a year where all I did was row. I did that and I was like, you know what? I'm done. And I gave myself the permission. Well, you had said, you know, because I. We build self-esteem and self-respect the same way we get it for other people, by them sticking to their commitment, saying what they'll do, and doing what they say. Right. And when we do the same, that's how we learn to respect ourselves. And so I made that deal with myself of, okay, you will go, and if all you do is a warm-up, great. And then when it hit that point of where, well, you know, you should stay, you could, you blah, blah, no, I'm done. I, I gave myself this permission. I'm done. I'm leaving. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Still in uh, still in good faith uh, uh, contract with myself. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things was I wasn't hitting my physical goals. And I really love ice cream. And I would still buy it and, you know, eat half a tub in a night. And uh, then, though, there was uh, a friend of mine went to Europe, and I told her I wanted her to bring me back a Speedo. She said, why? I said, well, because I want one. <laughs> she said, okay. And uh, my whole goal was to then look good in it. I was like, okay, if I'm going to wear it, I, I have to look like I swim professionally. I have to look good. I have to do all that. And so I would visualize myself and how I looked in the Speedo and it got to the point where and I wanted to be a able to do it the next season because I think I got the speed the Speedo in the fall so I was like okay my next year and again it was one of those things where I didn't have to make myself or like oh oh yeah my notes okay it's time for me to lay down for bed and I need to visualize this before excuse me but it got to the point where at the grocery store I'd forget about ice cream I'd walk by the freezer section and I'd forget about the ice cream I would not even think about it because it was not aligned with my vision mm -hmm. and with what I'm doing now there are some things I've not done and I'm not doing because it doesn't align with that vision mm -hmm. it's counterproductive and again it's not a, vi a vision I have to remind myself to think about or visualize, it comes up several times during the day mm -hmm. if I want it to or not. And it's, it's, it, it's, it's those guideposts of, you know, it's so important to know where I'm going and also uh, that includes uh, not going down trails that will take me away from where I'm going. Right. Yeah, one of the the things that I 
I've experienced, and I know other people experience it too, is whenever they uh, make a, a sincere commitment uh, about something or have a, a sincere goal, and then they don't produce for it. I mean, they, they forget about it. Um, and then all of a sudden they realize, that, oh man, I, you know, I wanted to do that. They beat themselves up. Right. You know, uh, and uh, I think one of the big s secrets uh, about how to overcome that situation is, is if you, you recognize, okay, I said I was going to do this and, you know, two weeks have gone by and, and it hasn't happened. If it's something that you can do right now in this moment, do it. If you can't physically do because of, you know, location or time constraint, whatever, you can't physically do it, just close your eyes at the moment and imagine that you've done it, that you've experienced it. And I find for myself that if I do that, like, you know, I, I know the value of holding images in my mind just before I go to sleep. And yet, when I lay down to go to sleep, a lot of times I'm asleep before I have another thought. Right. <laughs> um, which a lot of people hate hate me for <laughs> for some reason. I can go to sleep that quick. Uh huh. <clears throat> yeah, I I experience that. You know, uh, other times, um, I can't hold my mind to the thought. I mean, it. You know, I I, I think the thought one time and. And then my mind goes wandering off to something else. And all of a sudden, I, I catch it. might be 20 minutes later or something. I catch it. Now I go back. Okay, go back. Go back. Get yourself lined up here uh, and do it again. And over time, it will become a habit that you can do. Um, and then once once it becomes a habit that you can imagine this certain scene time after time after time after time, it will naturally just take place in your life. Right. Well, I haven't thought much about what I'll do if I don't, if I come in shy from the goal. Mm -hmm. And that's been really exciting to me is because it's more difficult to imagine not achieve, achieving it than it is to imagine achieving it. Right. Which is really exci exciting to me because uh, during my first meditation on it, uh, the goal increased by 50%. And I was shocked by that, but then it felt more right. I was more in line with that goal than I was with the lesser goal right and but i already know what i'll do in that instance if it occurs mm -hmm. is where i'll go how the next time how can i better align myself and be in harmony with that goal right you know, right. who do I need to be? Where do I need to make space? And just like when I was sitting here last week and I had to visualize myself working with this new venture I'm on of what would I look like doing this enthusiastically, successfully, while not dreading it. Mm-hmm. And working in my home office, and the thought came, you know, put on a suit and tie. You're going to the office. You're doing work. It's a serious thing. Take it seriously and dress like you take it seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons why you and I show up the way we do at Toastmasters is because we take it seriously. Right. It's just like showing up to church. We take it seriously. So we dress accordingly. We present ourselves as though we take this seriously. Right. And... I, you know, it's just, and that's part of the the dress of where people who take a thing seriously can often tell by someone, how someone else is dressed, if that person takes it seriously or not. Right. 
you know, you can't have a wedding where the bride shows up in her dress and her husband shows up in a jean and t and jeans and t-shirt. Right. Well, apparently this is he doesn't take it as seriously yeah. as you. Yeah, there was a miscommunication to, right. to which he will soon become aware of. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. And 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 that for me will be that is where then I uh, who knows, I might then just double the goal and all I'll do the same thing of okay, what would I, what would I look like if I'm doing all of the things necessary to allow space in my life for this to occur, mm-hmm. and and that's just what it would be. It would not be oh hell this is crap or oh I failed or oh woe is me or this or that. It would just be okay. What did I learn along the way and how can I mm-hmm. do? Yeah. Have have you ever heard of a woman by the name of Helen Haskell? I don't believe so. <clears throat> she lived in Texas. Um, she passed on within the last, say, 20 years or so. Um, but in the 50s and 60s, uh, she became known as the contest queen. Uh, oh yeah and and she won everything from houses to trips i think she won like seven trips to paris uh she won motorboats she won she won thousands of things um and her her big deal was becoming a master at manifesting and she had some physical work that she did, like, uh, you know, whenever she first got the idea of, oh, there are people that are giving away houses. Uh, and she started to look into that, you know, started to write to them, at, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, everything was done, you know, by yeah. mail. Um, she would write to them and then... Uh, if if she had an interest in that, she would ask them for rules or ask them for uh, exclusions. The, and... What what did the last person that won do? You know, uh, in order to try to get an idea of you know where to hold her thoughts and that kind of stuff. But the big thing she did was she just started living in the house in her mind. And uh, it got to the point that she was so confident in herself that the, the one house that she won, and I think she won, you know, three or four houses in her lifetime, but um, one of the last houses that she won, she knew that the TV crew or whoever it was, you know, going to be presenting the house and that stuff was going to come to her house and they would want to talk with both her and her husband. So she told her husband about it and he was convinced enough that she was going to win that he took off work. Uh, and uh, whenever the TV crew came, they were sitting in the back side of their house something and she said oh I think they're coming and she got up and went to the door and she opened the door before they knocked <laughs> wow you know and and she did it just so often that that from my particular perspective man that's that's got to be proof of something I need to know it <laughs> right well I, and and that's why I brought all of this up because I, again, that's one of the reasons why I even have been asking myself these questions of why has it worked and why has it not worked? Like when and where and why has it not worked or has and, worked for me in yeah, the past? And and I think that the answer to why it has not worked is you started pushing it. Mm-hmm. You started trying to do stuff in order to make it happen. Right, right. And I I don't want to make it happen because I'd have no idea how. Right. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's it's my job. Oh, there was, a, there was a quote. I just read it last night from Neville Goddard of where... 
it's made it was basically you know when you can move forward in faith in Christ and knowing that Christ is in you and that you know thy will be done mm-hmm. uh, it's so count counterintuitive with how we grow up of where oh you have to go out and make things happen right and instead of it's no, your job is to have a clear vision and purpose. Right. A clear intention. Mm-hmm. And be faithful and righteous in your convictions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you know, right. what once you start hearing those words and those fra- fr- phrases from the context of God in us instead of God without us somewhere judging us. Those words pack so much more meaning and punch. Right. And I'm really excited really, really excited because this is one of the first times where it's been an intentional goal. And like I said, I'm being a little bit more systematic about it. And we're like, yesterday I had to re- remind myself, no, I'm I'm not the one who makes things happen. Right. And moving forward in that faith and conviction and then thinking about it and rehearsing, especially when I recognize an emotion or a feeling that is familiar to these times where I have been a conscious creator in the past, it it, it then brings more conviction to me that, oh, I'm going the right way. Mm-hmm. And then when a little intrusive thought came in of, well, how are you going to do this and accomplish it? And what do you, and what's your next step? I could recognize it almost instantly. Oh right. no 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 no! This is yeah. not. This is not the way. Yeah. This How is I'm going to do way. it is the way that the answer will be given to me. I'm waiting for the answer. Right. I know how to do it. Right. Right. You know, in for all things, there is a time and a season. Right. You know, if if I need more space and time and growth. And understanding or a change in my life to achieve that goal, then I'll get that answer first. Right. And it will be at the right time and place where I can receive it and understand it. Right. Just like how it's been in the past. And I have full faith in that. Mm -hmm. So, even if, if, if you think about that idea of to everything there is a time and a season. Why do you want to set goals? I mean, it's going to be the way it's going to be. Right, right. Yeah, and again, it's that line between power and force of being clear in your intention of where you're going. Right. And that's one of the fun things about a motorcycle, just a motorcycle, motorcycle. That's why people will go on long trips with them is because they're not the most efficient, they're not the most safe, they're not the cheapest. But if you have an intention in mind, that's all you need to go on a bike trip. Right. And you can enjoy everything else so much more yep. because it's not about how you it, it it's not about how you get there. It's who you're being in what you're doing along the way. Right. And you just get to experience things in such a drastically different way right? than you would on a car on a freeway. Right. And if you think it's fun, then for you it is. Right, right. (laughs) And these days it's not as much fun as it used to be. And I'm glad I enjoyed, enjoyed it while I did. But that whole experience of having that clear intention and emotionally being there and working backwards from there just like what i did with my work last week of okay having issues what do i what do i look like doing this successfully right and 
what do I look like and what am I doing? How am I thinking? How am I being? How am I speaking? And when I got a clear image of that in my mind, I then just have to remind myself sometimes of that and then I can get back to work and do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking, <laughs> reminded me you're talking about the motorcycle when I was about your age or a little bit younger. Uh, I decided that I ought to have a motorcycle. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I never learned how to ride a bicycle. So whenever I got the motorcycle, I found out it rode me more than I rode it. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't fun for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I can't, ima- I can't imagine. Well, perhaps your next life. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> There's that one. Yep. Cool. Well, I think that was a great conversation, man. Yeah, me too. Well, thank, well, thanks so much, and uh, we'll uh, be seeing you next week. Okie dokie. All right, sir. Thank you. Mm-hmm.